hi guys and welcome to another video tutorial what I want to show you in this video is how to achieve a realistic chipping effect well as realistic as we possibly can uh, hope to achieve and um, in a previous video that I uploaded a couple of weeks ago I showed you how to do uh, weathering and chipping technique using sponge and in this video I want to try and get more of a realistic look and uh, doing research over the last couple of weeks um, I found uh, a product called AK Interactive Chipping Fluid and I wanted to experiment using the hairspray technique but uh, I've read some horror stories saying different brands of hairspray can give undesirable looks or it might not work too well and so on and so forth so I wanted a surefire way of being able to achieve that technique without any of the pitfalls so I come across this stuff it's heavy chipping acrylic fluid by AK interactive and I have to give a quick shout out to the gentleman that sold me this from uh, affinitymodels.co.uk and um, the reason he serves such a good plug is I phoned the gentleman up because I wanted to uh, make sure he had it in stock and um, he was a really nice guy and I uh, made sure I got it sent in the post the, the following day and uh, I'm always uh, in favour of supporting the uh, smaller stores out there so I'll put a link below so if anyone's interested obviously you can go and check that out if you want to um, but uh, it cost me £6 I believe and that included shipping uh, so it's about £4 for the actual um, chipping fluid itself and uh, there's 35 mil in the actual bottle itself there so I'm sure that would cover quite a lot of uh, tanks or flyers or whatever you decided uh, you wanted to chip the hell out of basically so what I'm going to be doing in this video is just painting the side panel of, of a rhino there just for time purposes so I don't drag this video out too long and uh, we're going to see how good this stuff actually is so first of all I'm going to be actually painting the rhino side in burnt umber now whichever sort of rust color that you fancy as your base really um, to be using this technique on it is up to you I mean I used rust recently when I was uh, doing some painting down on the uh, trench board at uh, Max House and I really like that color as well so rust would be a nice color to use but for this video we're going to be using model air burnt umber and I'm also going to be doing some cheeky little trick here as well where I'm going to be really laying down the uh, burnt umber really patchy and uneven to try and create more tones with just one paint again being lazy trying to uh, skip steps in this video to try and get it to uh, go along really quickly so you can see that it's, it's gonna look really messy um, laying it down you're gonna see splodges of really dark burnt umber and then like orangey brown in other areas but, it, it, but it's all it's all for a purpose and just just uh, like to say that obviously I'm using an airbrush here and it makes life really easy for me especially on f large flat surfaces but there's nothing stopping people out there that hasn't got an airbrush to actually emulate this technique you can still uh, do it with a brush obviously it might take a bit longer but uh, yeah you could still do it with a brush I don't see why you wouldn't be able to do that there I think I'm working at really high PSI here <laughs> just just to sort of like be really really quick and uh, I think I just splashed a little area there and going back to what I just said it's a good job that the unevenness of the overall paint job is uh, not critical Really, I really like this colour. Um, I mean, most of the model air colours that I've actually used today have gone out the airbrush fine, with the odd exception of the colour here and there. But uh, this, this, this is a, a lovely colour to uh, spray straight out the uh, airbrush. There, no th thinning required, really. Okay, sorry for the uh, dodgy camera work, but I was just adding tiny little dotted areas of dark patches. Okay, I've let that thoroughly dry, which is very crucial. So you need to let the uh, rust 
uh, base color dry thoroughly. So what I'm doing here is spraying the AK Interactive chipping fluid all over the um, Rhino side and it's so thin it comes out like water so if it comes down a little bit thick don't worry it's not going to obscure any of the detail and it's not going to cause you any problems. It also states on the bottle as well it might be a good idea to uh, spray two coats so I made it sh sh sorry I made sure that the coats went down quite thick. The important thing again with this uh, chipping fluid is to make sure it thoroughly dries before you go in with your uh, actual colour that you want to uh, chip off the vehicle. So I'm just showing you that it's got a bit of a gloss sheen to it but that does dull down a little as it's drying. It comes like a high satin finish once it's uh, dried the chipping fluid there. Okay, so I've allowed the uh, chipping fluid to uh, dry. So now I'm spraying it with Vallejo Model Air Grey Green. And the reason that I chose this colour is not only do I actually like the colour itself, but it's a very muted, dull colour. And that's what you'd find on a, a very old, rusty vehicle. You wouldn't find really bright and saturated colours. You're not going to find a, a really deep frary red on a rusty uh, car because the actual colour itself would, would have dulled down with age. I mean you could still use a red but it would be more of a pinky red in tone and, and same with blues it would be light light uh, blues instead of bright ultramarine type blues. Hopefully I explained myself uh, well there I'm not sure if I did but anyway. Um, so yeah nice smooth even coat of the uh, Vallejo Model Air Grey Green there as you can see covering straight up over that uh, chipping fluid. Again let the uh, colour that you've just laid down dry thoroughly. Now what we're going to be doing here is adding some warm water to the uh, panels of that Rhino side there and that's to enable the paint to start breaking down. I believe you can use cold water but uh, again for this video warm water is going to help break that paint up a little quicker so if you, if you want to take it slower it might be an idea to uh, take your time and work work away with some um, cool water there. Okay, I'm just using a cocktail stick here and you can see that the uh, it's taking a little bit of effort for me to uh, chip into it not too much but uh, I can see that the uh, water needs to do a little bit more work to free up that uh, top layer of paint there. Being a bit more liberal with the water, trying to start freeing up. I mean, you can see there that uh, even the water there started agitating the top layer of paint away there, and uh, that's a, soft, a very soft brush. So you can see that's going to start to uh, really work. Now I'm going with a much stiffer brush there, that's the GW Tank Brush and you can see it already it's starting to give some really nice organic looking paint chips and in this video to be honest I only pretty much, I think I do, only use the tank brush and the cocktail stick there but I would strongly recommend using all different types of brushes for more even more organic uh, chips so you'd want to use short stiff bristle brushes and you know whatever you can get your hand on really to uh, really really create some unique looking chips and uh, you might actually start to see the different tones that have come in from underneath so you'll see the really dark spots of the burnt umber and then you'll see lighter patches so there was method in the madness <laughs> earlier on when you seen that funky patchy looking rust uh, underneath Don't be too uh, despondent if uh, it doesn't start chipping up straight away. It, it can take a couple of minutes for that water to really start to seep in. And uh, if you need to come back in with more water, do just that.
I think what I found as well is uh, when you're actually using some of the hot water the uh, paint can start to bubble don't be alarmed that's just showing you that the uh, techniques working and uh, depending on what sort of uh, effects you want to go for bigger chips or, or littler chips is I found that when when it's more moist the area you're probably going to take up more of the uh, paint and it will create uh, larger chips but the tiny little stippling type chips the you know like the uh, really like pebbly type chips come from uh, the drier paint there You might have seen a little mistake on camera there. I think I picked up the wrong brush and it had a bit of pigment on it, so I started wiping some pigment onto the uh, uh, chips, which I actually didn't want to do there. And I've got to be completely honest, uh, I mean, watching this, I'm enjoying watching it back, re uh, remembering how much of a good time I actually had doing this chip. The, the fun is in the fact that you know you're seeing those chips pop out right before your eyes and uh, you, you're not 100% sure w w what chips you're going to get at the end of it but they all look fantastic uh, unlike using the sponge technique where you pretty much got an idea exactly where your chips are going to go this gives you such such organic chips and uh, it's nice to just keep pulling away at the paint and seeing seeing that uh, rust start popping out before your eyes it, it really is satisfying to be honest and uh, I've got to say I really enjoyed I really enjoyed doing it and as you can see here um, I mean this was one or two minutes worth of chipping but you can literally take it as far as you want really you just keep adding water and you can keep going till you know you're left with just a tiny tiny amount of the uh, paint if you, if you want to but obviously that's the individual's choice really okay so for the uh, time scale purposes I've carried on chipping it and uh, wasn't able to uh, get that on camera but you can see this is this is a really realistic looking chip effect the only thing missing is obviously we'd need to do some oil washes and some rust stains but the basic chip itself it's it's all there and it wasn't hard to achieve at all in, in fact it was it was a lot of fun it was an absolute blast um, please write comment subscribe um, really want to hear your thoughts um, do, do you think this is a cool technique or do you know uh, any others that you think I should check out? I'm always open to suggestions. And yeah, uh, please rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching, guys.